Hey there, I'm back with another video, still missing all of you, and I hope you're staying healthy. Um, I wanted to go over pages six, seven, and eight just to give you some tips and remind you of um, some of the things that you, um, we learned way back in the fall. So the first one was dividing polynomials. And for that one, I feel like the angle's weird, sorry. And for that one, we're just gonna divide the numbers out in front. So I'm gonna highlight so you can see. You're gonna start by just dividing. So I would divide negative eight divided by negative four. And when I do that, I get two. And then remember, when you divide, you just subtract those exponents if they have the same letter. So my next one had x to the seventh and x to the third. So when I divided that, I got x to the fourth, just like that. Um, when you have ones that have more than one, so I'm gonna look at number 12 because I think that one's one that we need to remind ourselves of what to do. You have to remember that we're lazy mathematicians all over the place and that one should be in front of the X's that are in there. So I just put my ones in. And I have to start by dividing and I'm first gonna divide here. And I'm gonna divide one X divided by one X. And remember one divided by one gives me one. And then when I have X to the, remember we put our ones up there first, minus X to the first, it's x to the zero, we don't write that, okay? And then I'm gonna keep my sign the same because it's three divided by one, which gives me just a three. And again, I have an x to the first up here divided by x to the first. The x's are gonna go away. And then you've got a w, and the w doesn't have anything to divide by, so that's just gonna come down. So on this one, I have one plus three w. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do for the one in the middle. Um, factoring, we spent lots and lots and lots of time on factoring. We probably did all of November and most of December all on factoring. So remember, um, I gave you the directions right in the middle of the page on finding the GCF of something. So you're gonna use the button that says math and then arrow over to find num. Go down to nine or hit the button that says number nine and then you're gonna put in the numbers. You can only put in two, and you have to use the parentheses um, for that one and a comma in the middle. So, so the first one you have the four x squared minus four x, and you're going to find that that has a GCF of four and x, because I could take a four out of both of them, and they both have an x. They both have an x, remember you take the smallest exponent out. That's my GCF. Now for factoring, we're gonna take that GCF and put it out in front. So it's first gonna come live out here and this was our next step. We're gonna take that four X and the parentheses go there. And then we went back up and we wrote the GCF underneath each term, just like that. So then it's just like what we did up top here. You take the four divided by four and you get one. You subtract those exponents, so you have X squared. And remember, we were even lazy mathematicians, that's X to the first. When you subtract that, that becomes an X. I'm gonna keep my sign the same, and I'm gonna say four divided by four. Remember, we still have to do that and write that one down to hold our place. And then I see that I have an X and an X, so that's X to the first minus X to the first, so I just write it down like this. And in class, I also would accept when we have the four X, X minus one. So both of those are equivalent statements and those both work, okay? So I'm gonna let you try two and three on your own. Remember the answer key is posted on my webpage for you. So if you don't remember or you wanna see if you got it right, it's there waiting for you. If you look at the next page, which is page seven, we're doing the trinomials, or I call them the AM, the add and multiply factoring ones. So you're gonna say, is there a GCF? You've gone through, like on choice one, you have a one X squared, a five X, and a six. I don't have a GCF with any of those numbers, and I don't have a GCF with any of the variables or the letters that are there. So because I don't, I have to figure out what adds and what multiplies. So remember, we would write an AM on the top there. What adds to get me that, don't forget the sign, negative five, that multiplies to give me a positive six. Okay, just like that. And then what we would do is in our calculator, 
we would hit all the factors in, and you can use the y equals, and then I would put in six, divided by x, and hit the second graph, and that's gonna give you your table. All right, so I would go through and say, um, negative one and negative six, negative two and negative three. Um, those are my two terms there because remember you're gonna put the sign in there, but you have to also put your um, positives in there. So here's what we, your, your um, chart should look like. This is what I use to multiply, and then over here I'm gonna figure out what it adds to. Oh gosh, I need a whiteboard, I apologize. There we go. So then I'm gonna actually add those terms. So when I take negative one plus negative six, I get negative seven. The next one I have negative two and negative three. Wow, that actually gives me my negative five. And that's what I was looking for for over here. So that means these are the two, that's the pair that I'm looking for. And all I have to do is use my parentheses and have x minus two, x minus three. And actually, I was looking at my answer key that I put out there and I realized that I had done it wrong in the answer key. It's so easy to do that, so I apologize. This is actually the right answer for question number um, four. Eh, sorry, we all make mistakes. And I had to pull this together super fast. All right, so this should be the right answer for that one. I wonder if I have to check the rest of them. No, the rest of them look good. So the rest of them are answered correctly in the answer key, so sorry about that. All right. And then if we look at the next page, I have the difference of two perfect squares. So it's another bit of factoring that we did. When we're looking at that one, we still go through and say, is there um, a GCF? Well, I have an X squared for the first one and I have a 25. I can't pull anything out. And then I say, is this the difference uh, or is, can I do AM factoring? So that always has three terms and what adds and multiplies. So that one doesn't work because I only have two terms. Since I only have two terms, I'm gonna have to figure out the perfect square, all right? So I take that square root symbol that looks like this and I plug it into my calculator. So I'm gonna put the square root of 25 and if that comes out with an even, which it does, it becomes five and I have a minus sign and my exponent is even, then I'm good to go. So remember all that, even exponent, I'm subtracting, and it came out as a nice even number in our calculator when we use the square root sign. So when I do that, all I have to do is set up my parentheses so it looks like this. And then remember, when we do the difference of two perfect squares, one of them's gonna be a plus, one of them's gonna be a minus. Order doesn't matter, so if yours is opposite than mine, that's okay. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog in the background, he's growling. I promise he's friendly. All right, so even exponent, that's what you're looking for there. All right, and I think, did I have you go page eight? All right, so that gets us caught up for the week. I do wanna offer this to all of you. I have, I have updated my actual calendar to match what the calendar that you guys have in your packet. So it's on my website, just like I've been using all year. And in there, I actually put office hours. So I am going to um, send out an email for um, parents and students, and I'm going to give you a link. I think it works best if you use an actual computer rather than your phone. So I'm hoping you guys have access to Wi-Fi and a computer. And you can click on the link that I'm gonna send and you can jump in, you'll be able to see my face, we'll be able to talk. So if you have a specific question, you just wanna say hi, cause you miss me, cause I miss you guys, jump on. Um, I have that listed. I think I said Monday from one until two, I'd be available. So um, if that time doesn't work or it overlaps with somebody else that's teaching, feel free to shoot me an email and we can find a different time that matches your schedule, all right? So I miss you all, have a great one, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.